I might lose some followers and subscribers and friends here, uh, but I have a confession to make, which is that uh, I got a Mac uh, after quite a long time working in finance using PCs and being an avid PC user and actually picking on Macs occasionally. I got a Mac. I love this thing. And I would first of all like to say these are just great computers. Uh, but then beyond that, I want to get to the heart of this video, which is really showing people who have Macs, they don't need to sell their Mac if they're headed to the corporate world or the finance world in particular. The short story here is that you can actually use your Mac as a PC in a variety of ways, actually, not just one, which is often explained. There's just like one way to use your Mac as a PC. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. And at least for me, I find that working in Excel and then uh, PowerPoint in particular is just easier to work in the native Microsoft interface because the Mac for Excel, Mac for PowerPoint just isn't nearly as helpful and doesn't have a lot of the shortcut keys that you typically use on a PC. So without further ado, I'm going to walk through this and I'm going to go in order of least difficult to set up to most difficult to set up. And I should note that this first option here is something that really only works if you already have a separate PC that you can remote into. Uh, if you don't have that as an option, then hop to the second option, which is the shadow PC. To begin with here, I want to start with Parsec. So Parsec is really what I use the most because I actually have a pretty powerful desktop computer that I clearly can't carry around with me. And Parsec essentially allows you to log into that computer with super, super low latency. This is actually built for gaming and it allows you to jump into your PC and use it just like a PC. And the thing to understand is that because it's a latency, it doesn't really feel like you're in a different computer. I've actually led entire seminars where I'm using Parsec and you really just wouldn't know because it's so fast. To get this set up, it's really simple. You just download the program on your, your Mac and on the PC. And you can also go vice versa, by the way. You can go PC to Mac as well if you'd like. And then you install the program as a host on the PC in this case, and then you just log into your uh, PC via the Mac. Now, from a pricing perspective, the base pricing here is 10 bucks a month, but the caveat there is that if you just wanna use it for personal use, it's actually free. If it's just a single link, you don't have all the features and you don't have quite as low a latency as the, the paid options. So if you wanna do gaming or any high-end uh, graphic stuff or particularly dealing with big Excel files, I'd probably just get the more expensive version here, which is 10 bucks a month. Uh, but in short, you can use this to access whatever PC you already have. And so just to show you this, I'm gonna hop in and open up the Parsec app. And when you first open it up, once you've got it installed on both computers, you'll have the ability to jump into your computer and you can just click connect here. And when you do that, and I'll just press uh, Command Control F to go full screen. By the way, you can have multiple screens, which is one of the premium features. You have to get the paid version to get that. But you can actually have multiple screens as well. You're now in a Windows interface and it will operate just like regular Windows. The one thing to note here is that by default, across really all of the applications that I'm about to share here, the command key is set up by default as the Windows key and the option key is set up as the Alt key. And just from a keyboard arrangement standpoint, that's the opposite of how it's set up on a PC. And there's a solution to this, which is really easy to install. And the solution is this program called Power Toys. And so if you go into Power Toys, which I'll share a link for in the description here, you can install this program from the Microsoft Store. It's free. You go to Keyboard Manager, and what you can see here is that I have remapped my Windows key to my Alt key, my Alt key to my Windows key, and then for the Delete key, it's actually set up as a backspace by default across Windows applications. And what I've done here is I've changed Control Delete to be Proper Delete, so you actually erase. And with that set up, you just turn it on, and you now have essentially a PC keyboard and everything set up, and it's as I said, super low latency, super fast. And this is really my primary approach to using Windows on my Mac. Now to go back, I'm just gonna swipe out and use the, the four finger swipe here, swipe out. I'm gonna close Parsec and then I'll open the next option here, Shadow. So if we go to shadow.tech, uh, you'll see first of all, they just launched this, that they have a $9.99 a month basic PC in the cloud. And that's what this is. It's a computer that's operating in the cloud. And when you go into the website here, what you're gonna see is that you essentially just go into their interface. You can pick different types of PCs. We've got a basic PC, which is 10 bucks a month. If you want to do gaming, they've got a gaming PC or a pro PC. I do a lot of video editing and higher end applications. So I went with the pro option, uh, but you don't need that for most regular everyday uses. And you essentially just install an application into your Mac 
And then when you have that set up, you'll get a little icon like this and you'll click it. And this launcher will essentially open up a PC in the cloud for you. And we get it up here. It's going to say start now. Now, sometimes it takes a second to load, which is what you're seeing here. It's actually going really quick here. Press start now. And now once this is loaded, we're, we now have a PC in the cloud. And you can see I've got a bunch of games that I was toying with here to try to see how capable this is from a gaming perspective. And what I would tell you is that with games, particularly high-end games, you probably want to have a hardwired connection. It's, it's actually still really good even without a hardwired connection. But if you want to play something like a Red Dead Redemption 2, or if you're using, let's say, really big Excel files for the finance side of things, it's probably better to have a hardwired connection, but you can still do essentially anything you'd like with the basic connection, with the basic Wi-Fi connection, and it's great. Again, you will probably want to remap your keyboard, but in short, you have essentially a full PC in the cloud, and as you can see, it's Windows. Now, the one thing I want to note here that's really cool about this is if we go into uh, Chrome, for example, and we open it up, what you're going to see here is one of the neater features of this whole technology, which is if I do a speed test, you'll see that essentially the speed that I'm getting here is, and actually my local connection is something closer to 500 megs over Wi-Fi at home. What I'm getting here is actually the one gigabyte connection that's sitting in the data center. So I've had situations with this and also with Parsec essentially, where I have you know local internet speed of let's say 10 or 20 megabytes, but the in the cloud or at home with Parsec connection is really fast. And essentially you're using the fast internet from whichever connection you're using. So you don't even need to have super fast internet for this. And the nice thing is you're actually accessing the internet in the application. And so all it's really doing is sending a picture back to you. So in short, this is probably gonna be the best option for most people. They have a monthly package. Uh, you don't really have to install anything. You don't need to buy another computer. And it's just a really nice interface and a really easy interface to use. So that's the Shadow PC. I'm gonna hop again back out of this. And then from there, I'm gonna go up and talk about the next option, which is probably the most commonly talked about option, which is Parallels, which is what I used when I first moved over to a Mac. And what Parallels does is it essentially allows you to emulate Windows on a Mac directly. So it's not in the cloud, it's not someone else's computer, but it's Windows on your actual Mac. And so if you want to get this program, it's about 120 bucks a year, but if you're a student, you can get it for 60 bucks a year. And what you'll see here is you can open up Parallels, which is, again, an application you need to install. I actually haven't installed the latest version, so I'm gonna have to remind myself later for this one. And then when you open this up, again, you have a native, Windows interface on your Mac, and you can essentially use Windows as you normally would. Now it's gonna take a second here to load up. And once this loads, you have Windows 11 that you can use and the actual Mac that you're using day to day. And so it's the same exact thing as any other uh, interface that you would use. Now I need to caveat here that there's a little bit of weirdness with parallels, particularly with the Alt key. And essentially what I ended up doing here was setting this up with a custom keyboard uh, mapping. And so if you go to the uh, keyboard interface, keyboard setup interface and parallels, you can essentially change the mappings for your different keys. I'll probably set up a different video to show you how this works. It's a little bit of a process. And the short story here is that in programs like Excel and PowerPoint, if you don't have this set up properly and you hit the alt key uh, in this interface, you're going to get like a half second lag between when you hit the key when it shows up on the screen and it's really annoying and there's a way to work around that. And I'll probably show that in just a separate video. Um, but essentially what I've done here is I just similar to the power toy setup is flipped my keys. Uh, in the end, you have the same exact interface. You have a windows interface and this is the uh, third option. here. Now moving back out, I'm going to close parallels and with parallels close, I'm going to talk about the last option here, which really only applies if you have an Intel processor, which is really the 2019 max and prior. And the way to figure that out is you go up to the Apple icon here, you click about this Mac. And if you see here down below, you have, oh, sorry, up above, you have the processor here that says Intel Core. If you don't see Intel there, if you see like M1, M2 processor, that this won't work, this next solution. So in order to access this next solution, again, you need an Intel chip. And the solution is this thing called Bootcamp, which does solve the problem, but it actually requires you to partition your hard drive and essentially allocate space in your hard drive and you can't be in Windows and hop to Mac or Mac and hop to Windows. You essentially have to restart your computer. 
And as I'll explain in a second, that's how you access a full uh, Windows experience. And so should you decide to go down this path and actually install this next option, you need to go to this URL, which I'll share in the uh, description down below. And then when you get to the page, you just want to read through the requirements and make sure your computer is set up for this particular program, the enough space and enough RAM and so on and so forth. And then you're going to work through the steps here and I'll let you click through these when you get to the actual page here, but you're going to just check your secure boot settings with just a few clicks. You'll then open up the bootcamp assistant. So you go to finder and type in bootcamp. See, I already started it here. So boot camp assistant. And then you'll get this window and it's just a few clicks. You basically go click through and essentially say, I want to install windows on my Mac and set a partition space for that. And along the way, what you'll need to do is actually install windows into that partition. And in order to do that, they give you a link here to a disk image. So you need this windows 10 disk image in order to install the bootcamp setup. Uh, so you want to download this before you actually jump into the bootcamp assistant. And then once that's in place, you'll hop into the bootcamp assistant, lock everything in and it will install. And then once that's all set up, essentially the way this works is when you power on your Mac, you just hold the option key down. And when you power it on, it'll give you an interface that allows you to log into the Mac interface or a Windows interface. And the thing to understand about an Intel based uh, Mac, and hopefully I don't offend any Mac lovers here, is that the Intel based Mac really is a PC from a hardware perspective. And so once you set this thing up with bootcamp, you're literally running Windows as if it were a regular PC. So there's really no difference at all between running that and running a regular PC laptop. And so now with bootcamp covered, we have really the last option that allows us to access Windows on a Mac. Now I need to cover one last thing here, which isn't really a Windows emulator or Windows access mechanism, but it's rather a mechanism that essentially emulates having the alt keys in Excel for Mac and PowerPoint for Mac, and it's relatively easy to install. The catch is that the, the keys that are available are kind of limited. And then beyond that, it's a little bit laggy. So you'll be able to use the option key to essentially access items in your file menu like you would in, in a regular Windows interface, but it's a little bit laggy. And that option is this program called Accelerator Keys. And with Accelerator Keys, you basically just download a program. It costs $3 a month. And essentially you install it and you'll be able to access the alt keys on both of the programs. Again, it doesn't capture all of the different shortcuts that are available in PowerPoint and Excel. And beyond that, it's just a little bit laggy. So you'll hit the key and it takes, you know, a half second or so before the, the shortcut shows up, which is kind of annoying when you're trying to move quickly. And so this is one last option here. I like it. I don't love it, but I'd encourage you to check it out. If it's, it's a relatively easy thing to install if you really just want to keep your native Mac interface. And so that's all I had to share here. Hopefully this is helpful. And again, I wanted to share this because I'm now a Mac user and I really just don't want people to have to sell their Mac in order to work in the corporate world or work in finance. And there are a bunch of ways, as you can see here, that allow you to access a PC interface when you need it and to have your lovely Mac interface whenever you want it for most of the other time.